everyone. Greetings from Colombo, Sri Lanka. I'm Professor Kokila Honasinghe, and I'm the head of the Department of Public and International Law Department uh, at the Faculty of Law, University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. And I teach environmental law and human rights law uh, so for graduate and postgraduate students. Yes, sir. I you... was a member of the Can you make it full screen? Climate Research Cohort 2021 to 2022. And I was fortunate enough to represent Sri Lanka at COP27 last year. I'm the founding director of Center for Environmental Law and Policy Self at the Faculty of Law, University of Colombo. I have engaged in research at the regional level on climate change and also on disaster management laws. And also, I was a resident, visiting researcher and a teaching fellow at Erasmus University Rotterdam in the Netherlands and also University of Granada in Spain. I was a research fellow in Jinda Global University, India, and also I collaborate many research programs with Special Center for Disaster Research at Jawaharlal Nehru University in India, and also Maharashtra National Law University and South Asian University in India. So thank you very much for joining with me today. And my speech on this World Environment Day presentation is on beyond reasonable doubt the relevancy of basic sciences improving the rights of nature. I consider this opportunity to talk to you on the World Environment Day as a divine task rest upon me. Why? Not because I am an environmental law expert, but because I am fortunate enough to continue to survive on this planet today, despite the de detrimental environmental catastrophes pose threat on the earth. We, the mankind, are the worst destructors of Mother Earth. Therefore, my main focus is to analyze why we should go beyond claiming right, human right to environment to celebrate rights of nature and in order to do so, what support the legal experts seek from basic sciences and its application. The right discourse between Homo sapiens and nature has been evolved since the ancient time till to date. Trace it back in the Old Testament, Adam and Eve were tempted by the Satan to eat fruits from the forbidden tree and for what they were cursed by the God. One can argue this story resembles that the human breed will destroy nature and subsequently destroy human survival itself. Overconsumption of natural resources by the present generation poses threats for the future generations of enjoying the same fruits of natural resources for their development needs. According to ancient scriptures of Mahamansa, in 600 BC in Sri Lanka, where Arhat Mahinda, who was in diplomatic religious mission to Sri Lanka from India, preached to the Sri Lankan king that all wild, wild beasts have the right to live. The king is only a ruler and the custodian. Nature has its own rights and the ruler cannot determine its ownership. Determination of superiority of nature and human beings is an eternal struggle since the time immemorial. The legal approaches to protect the environment have so far been biased towards human-centered focus, i.e. 
anthropocentric approach, which emphasized the protection of rights of human beings towards the environment. On the other hand, much broader and a holistic approach to protect the environment is ecocentric focus which is inclusive of humans and nature, the entire spectrum of the earth. The discussion on anthropocentrism and ecocentrism opened another debate in the rights discourse as human right to environment and rights of nature. If the environment is not clean or healthy, then the humans will also face unsatisfactory living conditions. For instance, according to the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment of the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, a healthy environment is integral to the full enjoyment of wide range of human rights, including the rights to life, health, food, water, and sanitation. Accordingly, the right to environment relates to the entitlement of a person to live in better environment standards. However, contemporary environmental challenges which disturb a number of ecosystems such as climate emergency, disappearing environmental zones, unselective felling of trees, expanding of deserts, Various actions, damages to the environment may not be able to resolve, only be recognizing them by human rights violations. Therefore, all integral parts of the global biodiversity due to all uh, ecosystems require to be separately protected as integral parts of the global biodiversity. Due to these concerns, the human-centric approach of protecting environment through the right to environment is now evolving into a broader notion of rights of nature, which is considered as the ecocentric approach of environmental conservation. The rights of nature reevaluates human rights and relationships with nature. In the most simple meaning, it strives for a transition in which nature is placed at the core and the humans are connected to it in an independent way, as opposed to the right to environment, which was dominatedly human-centric. Most importantly, rights of nature identifies that an ecosystem has the right to exist, flourish, regenerate its vital cycles and naturally evolve without human force destruction. Accordingly, it provides subsidiary rights of nature, such as right to restoration, right to natural processes, right to ecosystem functioning without interference. The rights of nature grant ecosystems, the right to legal personhood and the right to legal representation by a guardian. The right to legal personhood entitles ecosystems to defend themselves in court against any human-induced or nature-induced destruction or degradation. Rights of nature activists have utilized various avenues within the justice system and legal remedies to further develop this concept. These avenues include constitutional and statutory provisions, judicial review, and green activism, including indigenous movement. The doctrine of rights of nature is gaining momentum across the legal world. A series of cases were filed as legal experiments. Some were successful, while others failed. A careful analysis of the reasons for failure or success notes that the lack of scientific establishment of the legal personhood largely contributes to making fail fruitless claims under the rights of nature. Therefore, basic sciences 
and its data play a vital role in proving the logical sequences of facts when proving a case on rights of nature. The most related point of my discussion for today's presentation, that is how we can use basic sciences in establishing the argument on rights of nature more correctly based on scientific evidence is as follows. The absence of evidence to prove the link between damage and the main causes is one of the key defensive agreement uh, arguments against the rights of nature. Another defense against right of nature is the notion that the nature cannot embrace rights and responsibilities equally. In many jurisdictions where the rights of nature claims have succeeded, reliance on scientific data and findings has been substantial. Therefore, legal arguments has been, therefore, legal arguments seeking justice for nature need to be supported with well-established scientific data. In analyzing the relevancy of basic sciences in proving the legal arguments of rights of nature, we can identify several unanswered questions in the legal domain. Some of the key elements of those questions are as follows. Number one, how to define nature? The definition of nature can be varied depending on the subject in the matter of concern. The nature can be defined according to the sociological, political, geographical, spiritual, and aesthetic sense. Therefore, how nature can be defined according to the available scientific evidence and analysis could be the closest definition to universal acceptance. Basic sciences can address the issue of definition with the minimum confusion. Number two, how many nature, how, how may nature claim its rights? The definition of nature plays a significant role in determining how it claims rights. So far, the legal assessment on how to claim rights can be either the government agent or custodian or a guardian can act on behalf in claiming the rights on behalf of nature. Number three, what rights nature will have? Nature can have moral rights and legal rights. Its legal rights derive from constitutional principles like in Ecuador Constitution, statutory provisions like in Wanganai River Settlement Act in New Zealand, or from judicial precedents like in India and Bangladesh. Rights of nature has been identified as natural communities and ecosystems who exist, flourish, and naturally evolve. However, Determining the scope of its rights, the use of basic sciences can be very useful. Objective interpretation of the relevant parameters in determining what rights can nature claim would be a fascinated scientific finding for legal interpretation. Number four, how can nature be held in responsibility? In Lalit Miglani and Mohammed Salim, the two famous landmark Uttarakhand High Court judgments in India, the defense lawyer raised the issue of held the nature responsible for damages caused in natural disasters. Under the legal and political principles such as representative democracy and state responsibility, states the government can be held in responsible for human rights violation. Example, state shall take measures to prevent systematic torture. Therefore, the government agents under whose purview the necessary preventive mechanisms and actions should be held responsible for the natural disasters on behalf of the nature. In order to take necessary preventive actions, basic sciences such as geology, physics and other related subjects, subject areas 
can be beneficial in weather forecasting and geographical calculations and measurements. Number five, the traditional local standard is granted only to natural persons and legal persons. Rights of nature scholars advocate that the legal personhood can be changed to legal naturehood to avoid confusions related to using similar yardsticks. Those have been used in determining legal personhood in natural objects. In winding up, the entire argument, I would say, three components. First, the nature is facing a complex and challenging situation today with the unsustainable manner of human interference in natural evolution with the short-term development goals. Existing legal frameworks in regulating this human interaction has been limited to anthropocentric strategies. Therefore, the nature needs a broader and more inclusive strategies upon facing the complex challenges. Ecocentric approach in environmental law has been recognized as a strategy in addressing complexities in global environmental problems. Secondly, rights-based approach in environmental protection in connection with the third generational human rights discourse took considerable effort to prevent environmental damages that pose damages for right for a clean and healthy environment and also maintain a quality living standard in the environment that is sustainable uh, be for human survival after a careful assessment of human right to clean environment, the scholars have now realized that human rights alone cannot solve the global environment problem that can adversely impact nature itself. Therefore, the novel approach is right-based path is right of nature. Finally, in concluding, in order to establish more acceptable solutions for global environmental problem, the nature should be looked at from non-traditional legal parameters. Therefore, rights of nature scholars suggest legal naturehood in place of legal personhood for the justice seekers who come to courts. In order to place the argument of nature as a legal person before the court, basic sciences can play a main role. Many arguments in favor of establishing rights of natural phenomenon to be protected and flourished should be proven with scientific data and findings. Scientific and objective analysis based on experimentally proven data will be essential to address precautionary actions to prevent or minimize the damages to the nature. Finally, I thank the organizers of the UNESCO and Tata Institute of Fundamental Research for inviting me as a guest speaker of this event held to celebrate the World Environment Day 2023. I plead everyone who lives on the earth today Please contribute in whatever the way you can, small scale or larger scale, to make the Mother Earth a safer place for future generations. Heal the world forever. I won't. Thank you.